For this episode of Florida Roadside Attractions and Abandoned Places, we begin in Valrico. This train stopped on the tracks, not a very long one. I think there's less than 20 cars. Welcome to Valrico. And why not begin with this beauty? A creepy, potentially haunted, very haunting looking abandoned house. Right here by this busy traffic light in Valrico. Should we cross the street? I think we should. Mailbox is still up, look at that. This thing is old, man. I'd say early 1900s at least. Here we go. Haunts on. So there's a for sale sign on that side of the property. It looks like there's almost two acres here. This old house sits on it, it is for sale. I don't know if you'll be able to restore this though. Look at this. This is what I call an old cracker house, old Florida cracker house. The gate, wide open, little sidewalk here, brick sidewalk right up to the main porch. I'm gonna climb up in there, but I'm gonna be extremely careful. Actually, I might come through from the backside. Giant fireplace on the west side. All the windows busted out. Walking around to go through the back side of the house. Check this out. Over here in the yard. A basketball goal. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. I was just up in Indiana. Saw a lot of basketball goals. Of course. There's plenty of concrete here too. You gotta clean it off, but someone could still shoot a free throw or two. Oh my gosh, there's a swimming pool out here. Look at this. Abandoned swimming pool on this property. That's amazing. Holy cow. Also, there's like a house out here. Perhaps, ooh, I think that was a bathroom. Yeah, there's a toilet in there. This is freaking sick. They left the garden hose sitting right behind the house. It's beautiful. It's one of the coolest abandoned houses I've ever come upon. Also, I see a, a smiley face upstairs through the window on the wall. Right there, you see that in there? See the smiley face right up there? <laughs> it's a happy house. Hi, gotta be very careful. Look at this. Watch your step. Front porch. A lot of graffiti in here. Nice little breezeway. As you see in, in older Florida homes. See if we go through here. Old door. Hello. Wow. Okay. Gotta be careful. I think I found the old bathroom. This might have been the den, dining room, kitchen maybe. I think that was a sunroom. Look at this. Oh, there's the fireplace across the way. Now over on the other side of the room, the west side, there's the fireplace. Whew, kind of a stench in here. Also, we've got an artist that used to live here. I found the staircase. I don't know about this. Also, this reminds me of the staircase. This whole right here, this reminds me of the Myers house from Halloween. Also, the knoll post fell down the stairs and is resting upon the front door. It's a double door there for the main door, split door. But yeah, I'm gonna go up these stairs, but I'm gonna be very careful. Don't wanna run into Michael. Oh my gosh. Yeah, they're pretty firm actually. They're not too bad. Okay, I came up those steps. The floor's pretty solid up here. Someone left their phone number. Wow, it's a big house. I think there's just, there's four bedrooms just on the upstairs. A lot of graffiti, profanities on the wall. There's a closet, giant walk-in closet with a ladder that goes up to the attic. Oh my gosh, I don't know if we want to go up there, but there is an attic. Hello? Anyone home? This place could be haunted. I'm gonna go over here. Not cool, bro. Look at this. There's the basketball goal. 
right there. This would have been my room for sure. Welcome back to Florida Roadside Attractions and Abandoned Places. I am Tampa J, and we continue the journey today beginning here in Hillsborough County, but we're leaving and heading to Polk County to a town called Fort Meade, a town with some very unique American Civil War history. There's quite a few things I want to see out there down and around Fort Meade. There's much ahead. This is, again, one of the coolest finds as far as abandoned in Florida I've ever found. So cool we got it on camera. Now folks, this is real Florida. Stopped on the side of the road on my way to Fort Meade to check out all these cattle. I didn't mean to scare y'all. You guys are really close to the road. Look at all these beautiful creatures. Some over here too. It's a big farm. Big spread of land out here, lots of cattle. Uh oh, that one's not happy. He's staring into our soul. All right. Sorry to spook y'all, I just wanted to say hello. They're all looking at me. Oh my gosh, I'm glad there's a fence here. See everyone. And we're returning to Polk County once again. Welcome to the heart of the Florida phosphate industry. Lots of curvy winding roads and phosphate mines to the left and to the right. Welcome to the oldest city in Polk County, Fort Meade. Also, it says home of the Fighting Miners, 2004 state football champs. There's a lot of history right here in Fort Meade, especially with the United States Army. This city began with a fort in between the second and third Seminole War. There was a young army private by the name of George Meade who was stationed here, who would later become one of the leading commanders at Gettysburg, George Meade. Also, General Stonewall Jackson of the Confederacy served here in 1851 for the U.S. Army. Quite a few things we're gonna see here. There is a museum downtown. There's also the Peace River, an old bridge that runs across it. If you didn't guess, yes, Fort Meade, the town is named after General George Meade. Welcome to historic downtown Fort Meade, right here on the corner of 98 and 17, the historic district just west of this intersection. There's City Hall right across the way. And welcome to Main Street here, just beyond the courthouse. Nice little strip of brick buildings, stores, shops, local businesses, and at the end, I see a train station and also looks like a historical society or a museum. So we're gonna explore the downtown area and then later we'll head to the site of Old Fort Meade. Nice little two-story brick building here, City Hall. There's a historical marker to the left on the column up there. Let's read that. Great Floridians 2000, Nathaniel Nat Patterson, Florida Department of State, Florida League of Cities. So there you go, this has some sort of significance. Sounds like a cool club to me. City Hall, the address number eight, right here on Broadway. This is Broadway, not Main Street. China House, Papa John's also a gym there on the end of that stretch of buildings and right here a row of establishments this one right here mcfarlane's furniture and appliances some beautiful plants here on the porch snake plants also notice the age of these doors these original doors right here at the furniture store I like the color too very florida and check this old gun shop out c's gun store We've got john wayne in the window big truck behind us pass it We've got john wayne in the window this is actually mc's gun shop i couldn't see the m over there looks like i have a friend hello kitty how you doing i think he likes me and right next to the gun shop was an old timey looking barber shop another stretch of buildings here Right on the awning there, it says City of Fort Meade, established 1849, so there you go. Now on Seminole Street, there's some sirens. Right here at the corner of uh, Seminole and Broadway, there's a mural on here with a Confederate soldier. Now during the Civil War, the Confederacy did occupy the fort at the time. It later became Fort Meade. It had another name prior to, 
but the Union forces took over the fort and took over the town in 1864. And at the opposite corner here, a church sign, Cornerstone Ministry, storms happening, daily seek shelter in him, right before Broadway, furthering up. And here we are walking up the street. Looks like there's a Citizens Bank and Trust over there. And Citizens Bank used to be the first state bank. You can see the old plaque to the left, to the left of the ATM down there. 113 Broadway, this store, used to be called Miss Martha's. I like the name, just sitting vacant, as you can see right here. I wonder what Miss Martha was, or who Miss Martha was. And quite a few buildings sitting vacant along this way here. All the way down, antique store there to the left. But over on the end, there's a place called Southern Posh Inn, apparel, gifts, and interiors. Looks like a boutique or a craft store. In the window of the craft store here, this boutique, it says free ride if you shoplift from this store. Compliments of Sheriff Grady Judd, Polk County Sheriff. And the side of this boutique right here, the brick wall, the old windows have been painted in. Check out this beautiful mural. I like what they did here. Some cattle, an eagle, got some more cattle, an alligator. This is cool. I like that they use the windows. Florida landscape. And this is the last painting at the end of the building. Got some horsies over here. Very well done. Shout out to the artist. I don't see a name written on this mural, which is kind of bizarre. So if you know, comment below. Almost missed the little bunny right there behind the oak tree. Look at that. Hello, Mr. Bunny. There's a beautiful old Florida mansion right there on the corner. That is now the Fort Meade Historical Museum. There's quite a few things to see right there. And in the backyard, it sits along the train tracks. Also, notice how they are decorated for the 4th of July. Look at all the star-spangled banners, old glory. Right across the street from the Fort Meade Museum, the Peace River Packing Company, which has utilized a portion of the old Fort Meade train station. Look at this. It's the old train station right here along the railroad tracks across from the museum. And look, there's the Atlantic coastline right there. A train, we'll get a whole lot closer. Quite a few things to see right here. Glad that they kept this facade here. Thank you, Peace River Packing Company. Look at the old sign. Just like a ton of old Florida train stations we've seen here on this channel. There it is, right there. That's amazing. I'm glad this is still uh, standing. I wish we could peek in the windows, but they're all hazed or blocked out. Buford Brown Memorial Train Museum. Now, I think this is an extension, of course, of the Fort Meade Museum, but I think this train is considered a museum itself, the old Atlantic coastline. There's several cars, I'd say three or four, that go all the way back. Also, notice it says 1849 right there when they founded Fort Meade. North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, Georgia, Alabama. That makes up the Atlantic coastline. Look at this. How about this for a photo opportunity? The Buford Brown. Oh yeah, so look at this. There are, I believe, two railway cars and a caboose, so three cars in the engine and it looks like if the museum was open right now we could go on in look at this all the way back looks like they're decorated for the fourth of july too there's the caboose back there also a gazebo and there's the museum atlantic coastline Caboose, Jimmy Cotton Caboose. There you go, someone by the name of Jimmy Cotton. Several antique wagons out here. This one full of hay. Old buggy wagon there, I've seen so many like those in my day growing up. Not actually working, just like antique ones. Oh, look at this. Fort Meade streetcar line. Okay, so I was reading online that they actually had an old streetcar system here in Fort Meade, and I've seen a picture of it. I think there was a picture of it back on that mural in the building. And this is one of the original streetcars. And I believe they were just pulled by horse and buggy. And it's just got a normal tow hitch there for a vehicle, a truck, or whatnot, so they can tow it 
in the parades, the town parades and festivals. But yeah, this is one of the oldest streetcar lines in the state of Florida, right here in Fort Meade, or used to be, all the way up until 1985. Always finding the antique tractors. Oh my gosh, this is a McCormick. This thing is awesome. Take a closer look at it, but also look over here on the former loading dock by the railroad tracks, some antique farm equipment, some plows and other pieces. Yeah, all kinds of stuff over here. This is neato. Very rusty. McCormick Deering, right there on the front. I did see a plaque right here on the back fender. This looks like another old Grove tractor. There you go. McCormick Deering 1020 tractor, donated by Hazel and Bobbitt in memory of Fred Bobbitt, Farmer Fred, restored by IMC Norland Mine, Bartow, Florida. There you go. Love my antique tractors. Got one at home, a small one, but got a few of them. I'm here early in the morning. I'm anxious to come back sometime and tour this museum. That would be awesome to walk through there. So yeah, we'll definitely have to put this down on the list. Florida roadside attractions and abandoned places. We'll be back someday. Also, if it's your first time here, subscribe below. Come on back. There's much ahead, as I always say. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Over there by the gazebo, there's two flags. Looks like they've got bleachers set up. Maybe have some live music or something. Where are we at? Fourteen? 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. If I miscounted, I know someone's gonna correct me. We've got 27 Star Spangled Banners right here in front of the Fort Meade Historical Society. Established in 1989. Look at that. Tuesday through Thursday, 10 to two. Saturday 10 to 12. Today is Friday, so it's not happening. Oh boy. <laughs> I always come on the wrong days. Oh my gosh. Oh, it looks super nice in there. Look at that. Yeah, definitely in the much ahead. I'll be back. Super quiet town. Again, I say this all the time. If it wasn't for the highway, there would be nothing happening right now. I've barely seen anyone. If I had a picnic lunch, this is where I would eat. Although there is somewhere I want to eat today here in Fort Meade, and it's very cool. I'm actually very excited to eat lunch today. Wait till you see this place when we get there. Driving through the back streets of Fort Meade, I've noticed a lot of beautiful old houses and churches, historic churches. One of the oldest churches is right here in Fort Meade, and I'm heading right to it. Now, when you close your eyes and you picture a church, me and myself, I picture something like this. Welcome to the historic Christ Episcopal Church right here along the way. Just the main way through town. Actually, that's Broad Street. Downtown, where we just left, that way, past 17. I'm gonna go show you the front side of the church. This is technically the side of it, or I, maybe it is the front, but most of it sits along Broad Street. This is beautiful, isn't it? it reminds me of the church from Monster Squad, oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. Fort Meade Worship Center. Sundays, 11.15 and Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Look at that. It's a lot bigger than you thought it was, right? I was standing right there filming it. I'm gonna walk around it just to show you. Walk back a little bit. We're at the corner of Cleveland and Broadway. Wow. Also the bell tower up there, you can see the bell. And right here, this is actually the front of the church. There's a historic sign right to the right. Also another entrance right there. I'd say that's the back of the church. That's where the preacher or pastor would probably enter. Originally the Christ Church Episcopal built in 1889. Only 40 years after the town of Fort Meade was founded. It's on the National Register of Historic Places, May 6, 1976, the bicentennial of the United States. Got very quiet right here. There's a car coming, I hear it. But no traffic right now. This is a very peaceful church, I like it. You don't see too many of these this old and this great a shape. I'm glad it's here. 
And this might be on the same property, but out behind the church, a very old cracker shack. In very good shape though, sitting right underneath that oak tree. Also, there's a building here. It looks like classrooms, perhaps for Sunday school and whatnot, right behind the church. Not a bad angle to this church, right? All right, we're leaving the church and heading to a graveyard. Much ahead, or should I say much below. <laughs> yeah, that's creepy, isn't it? Northeast First Street and Washington Avenue, right here, the entryway to Evergreen Cemetery, the oldest cemetery in town. I'm here to look for a specific resting place for a person that used to live right here in Fort Meade. Beautiful headstones in here. Hello and howdy, everyone. Hello. I'm here to find John Hooker. Does anyone know where John Hooker is resting? Oh, you say? Okay. Thank you. This tombstone like none I've ever seen. Check this out. All it says is the dead cared for. Wow. Look at that. The dead cared for. That's creepy. I freaking love it. And right next to this family plot over here, look at the old wrought iron fence. I'll show you this first. Look at that. It's cool, isn't it? Right next to it, this tombstone right here, this resting place for John Irving Hooker. This is the oldest grave site in Fort Meade. John Irving Hooker, born in September 1822. September 22nd, 1822. He was born in Montgomery County, Georgia. And he died right here in Fort Meade in Polk County on January 2nd, 1862 at 39 years old. And the reason I'm showing you this, because this is the oldest recorded grave, recorded grave in all of Fort Meade, right here in Evergreen Cemetery, Mr. Hooker. Also, fun fact, the church where we just were at, the Episcopal Church, John attended that church. And it looks like he's also buried along with some other family members here to the left. So out of all the headstones you see in this cemetery, that one there is the oldest one here. Now I walked around a few minutes. I didn't realize, again, I parked right next to his grave right off the bat there. And I walked right by it looking for it. You can barely make it out. Check this out. Hey, John. Can barely make out Hooker right there, but I read online that he is the oldest known burial in the entire Fort Meade. So there you go. Had to show this. Had to show it. I came in peace and I leave in peace. No one follow me home, my friends. No one follow me home. <laughs> it's a beautiful one out here. Sure is. See you later, John. See you later, everyone. Also, apartment complex right across the street from you John and look at this beauty currently being restored there that's an old house okay and welcome just to show you on my phone to put things into perspective we're the blue dot right here in the center of town on 3rd Street Highway 17 over here the main thoroughfare this park is the former site of historic Fort Meade it just sits here between a bunch of houses. This is where the old fort used to sit. There's a couple markers over here that I'm gonna read that will tell you of its history. Just to show you what it looks like today, there's a sign here. Also, a picture of what the fort used to look like. Keep in mind, this was built, originally a fort built in the Seminole Wars back in the early 1800s. There's one of the carts that we saw earlier. Kinda shows you it was drawn by a, a horse and it was on a track. There's some oranges and also out here, a park. No kiddos out there playing today, but I'm sure there's been thousands of them. This is just a lot right here in the dead center of Fort Meade. And over this way, there's a couple signs that I'm gonna read, a couple historic markers. Site of Fort Meade, this historic marker will be the first one we read. It's got the state of Florida insignia on there. 
Crest Seal of the State of Florida. Side of Fort Meade, built by Lieutenant George G. Meade, who later became the commanding general of the Union forces during the Civil War. Yes, General Meade from Gettysburg. Headquarters of a military area during the Seminole Indian War, 1849 to 1858. Near here were fought several engagements with the hostiles. That's what the sign reads. Garrisoned by the U.S. Army and Florida Mounted Volunteer Troops. I was also reading online that Fort Meade during World War II was a busy place. I read that almost 3 million, I don't know if this is skewed, 3,500,000 troops came through Fort Meade for training. Some sort of army training or fort that was here. I don't know if it was this Fort Meade or if there was another one, but I did read that this town was significant in training troops during World War II. In memory of Lieutenant General Thomas J. Stonewall Jackson. If you know about the history of the Civil War, you know about Stonewall Jackson. January 21st, 1824 to May 10th, 1863, commanded the 2nd Corps Army of Northern Virginia, CSA, graduated from West Point U.S. Military Academy, 1846, breveted major for gallantry in the Mexican War, served as first lieutenant here at Fort Meade with Colonel of East 1st U.S. Artillery from December 1850 through May 1851. So there you go. This is why there's a stone wall. Huh? Memorial right here for Stonewall Jackson. This was erected on July 4th, 1983, right here in Fort Meade. So you have two generals, two historic generals from the American Civil War who both served at Fort Meade, right here. You got General Meade and Stonewall Jackson. That's pretty historic and significant history. Unique history right here in Fort Meade. That's crazy. Always loved the history of the Civil War. Studied it in college. Um, I've always said that I, I want to visit more battlefields and talk about the history. It is an important uh, part of our history here in America. A lot, of, a lot of things developed and changed during those times. And it was horrific. Almost... One million Americans, not just soldiers, were killed. And there was an old historic road that went from Fort Meade all the way to Tampa to the next U.S. Army post, Fort Brook, Old Fort Brook, which is currently the Old Fort Brook parking garage. Made several videos there and told of a young captain one station there by the name of Andrew Jackson, who also fought in the Seminole Wars. And that looks like the White House to me. It's definitely white, has those pillars. Another old historical home just down from Fort Meade, right here on 3rd. And I love pointing these houses out. Now this reminds me of an old Sears and Roebuck house. Look at the two lions. Looks like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre house. Oh yeah. And no, I'm not eating lunch at Burger King, but I had to show you this one for a couple reasons. One being the giant Whopper right on the side of the building there. Look at that, that's awesome, isn't it? You don't see Burger Kings like this every day. This one has a Whopper on it, right here in Fort Meade. And also inside, I know this because I stopped here earlier this morning to use the restroom. There's some historic photos right inside that door there as you walk in. I had to come back and share, I know, TMI. I had to use the restroom earlier. Got lettuce, tomato, ketchup, pickle, onion, no cheese though, no cheese on this Whopper. I like cheese on mine, what about you? So right here on the inside of the door, old photographs of downtown Fort Meade. This was called CM Sparkman Saloon, Mail Order House, a saloon, uh, a Maxwell Brothers Pawn Brokers and Bargain House. Look at all those old folks there on the sidewalk. This must have been early 1900s, and also the old Fort Meade Hotel with several people posed on the porch for the photograph. This is late 1800s. And above here, the post office, West Fort Meade. These folks, I'm guessing, worked at the post office, and there's a few more photos in here. This was called the Dairy Kitchen. Looks like an old general store. These folks on the porch. 
fruits, confections, fresh bread, cigars. And also up here, there's a bit of a glare, but there is the old Fort Meade High School. And last but not least, the Fort Meade Coca-Cola Bottling Company, which was really just an old barn. Hi. There's a couple of folks on a wagon right there. Look at that. All right, yeah, so right when you walk in the door here at Burger King in Fort Meade, you've got some history. I like that they did that. It's very cool. Also, you can get a Whopper here. They're pretty tasty, although I have something else in mind. There's something else to eat here that looks very cool. And right out beyond the parking lot of Dairy Queen, an old shack just sitting right there. Small little shack, three windows on the front, one each on the side. Just neat. All right, passing by it, and then we're, oh, there's a fire station. Passing by it, John's Drive-In Restaurant. Look at this beauty, classic drive-in restaurant. This is where we're gonna eat. Whoa, busy highway. Now I'm pulling up just to show you. I don't know if this is a traditional drive-in, doesn't look like there's any menus, but you can tell this used to be perhaps like an old traditional drive-in. Just like A&W root beer, you pull up, order your food, maybe someone would come out on roller skates. Oh yeah, looks like they have fried chicken, pork chops, and catfish. I guess I'll have to go inside. All right, I'm all parked up now on foot on the sidewalk. I love the old sign. The building looks in great shape. This looks like it could have used to been an old high hop or something perhaps maybe an old Maryland fried chicken I don't know I don't know if it's always been John's but it looks amazing there's also something in the window called a minor burger and I think that's probably what I will get several picnic tables outside I'll probably eat out here but we'll take a quick look inside the Herald Advocate looks like they have the local newspaper right here an old newspaper stand you don't see this every day dollar per coffee I should say you don't see it anymore Everything's gone online. And I decided to sit right here and enjoy. Check this out. John Miner's Den Specials. Got the specials up there. I just ordered my Miner Burger. Check out the menu, the prices. Not too bad. I think my burger, whoops. Miner Burger with cheese, six bucks. Also, for me, former home to Andrew McCutcheon of the Pirates. Look, there he is right here in the restaurant. He used to play for the Miners. And it makes sense why their colors are uh, black and gold there. There you go. Pittsburgh Pirates too. It's amazing. Also, got Grady Judd right there above Andrew. And a little bobblehead of the Polk County Sheriff there as well. Went with a half and half sweet tea with lemon. Tons of it. Look at that. Move over Whopper. Check it out. Miner Burger got the cheese. Big patty there. Kind of looks like a Whopper, doesn't it? Also, french fries. Here we go. That's a good burger. All right, I will be back to John's Diner. That was good. Next time, I noticed on the menu there was a BLT with a fried green tomato. So next time I come back to John's, that's what I'm getting. But that burger, I would definitely get again and will get again. But thanks for having us, John's Diner. That was a great treat. I'm glad I didn't go to Burger King. No offense to Burger King right down there. But that, uh, that smoked the Whopper. Sure did. <laughs> I do love a good Whopper though. I do. And now just about a mile south of downtown Fort Meade, welcome to Sand Mountain Road and US 17. Check out all the cobwebs in here. Can you see that? They need a dust out here. That's a lot. Big truck coming, hold on. Okay, so I came out here, Sand Mountain Road. Sand Mountain was a former tourist attraction, a ski sand tourist attraction. You would ski down a sand hill and this place was called Sand Mountain. Now you see a lot of dunes around here, phosphate dunes. This was a former phosphate uh, mine and they used the extra sand and created an attraction. This happened in the 1940s and the 1960s. I don't know if there is still a Sand Mountain on Sand Mountain Road, but I'm gonna go down there and show you. 
and I'll show you a picture from Sand Mountain back in the 1950s as well. This way. Okay, well, there's not really a mountain here today, but I found this on the map. It said Sand Mountain. I don't know 100% if this was the location. If it was, there's not much of a mountain here today. It's more of just a house. Huh. There is a ridge line across this lake beyond the trees here. You see the water? There is a ridge line over there, so it's very hilly around here. The sand was built from uh, phosphate mines. Again, we're in phosphate country, and it was piled on so people could sand ski, not snow ski. They, they use snow skis, but they were skiing down sand. I've got a picture from the 1950s of Sand Mountain. From 1940s to the 1960s, people would come out here and go sand skiing. And as you can see in the photo, there's a lot of folks gathered around, either just watching or skiing. That would have been awesome to see. I would have loved to have done that. I would have loved to have been out here in the heyday of Sand Mountain. Such a cool name too. Sand Mountain Road. This runs along the west side of Fort Meade. That will actually take us back to where we started. Right there. Burquist Road and Mount Pisgah Road. We come to Mount Pisgah Road here on the southeast side of Fort Meade. We're going to see the Peace River. Very quiet out here. No car is currently coming as we're crossing the river. Oh wow. On that side, looks like an old footbridge or a railway bridge. See out there? Look at that. There's the river. There's a bridge right there. All right, it's time to go hiking. Check this out. Peace River Park, 7 to 6. Eastern Standard. Looks like there's a canoe launch a thousand feet. No motor vehicles beyond this point. Just parked here. There's a couple other vehicles. Someone pulling in. Nice little hiking trail. The bridge just right up there. So I'm hoping to go back here and take a look at the bridge from down beside the waters. Also, we have to watch out for alligators. Are you ready? Let's get a hiking. This is uh, making me think about something. Earlier this week, we got the tragic news that actor Julian Sands, his remains were found. Julian went missing back in January. He went out on a hike somewhere out in California in the mountains and he went missing. And last week, some hikers found remains and they confirmed a couple days ago that actor Julian Sands who we met before here on this channel while I was at Days of the Dead last summer in Chicago, the horror convention. And I was surprised that Julian Sands was there. I was so excited because I was, I'm was i a huge fan. He was in a few movies that I liked, uh, Warlock. He played Warlock. But I was just so excited to be there and get a photograph with him, to talk to him and talk about his time on set with Warlock. I also got to comment on how brilliant of an actor he was. And I am shocked that he is no longer with us, folks. And being out here hiking made me think of it. He was known for hiking. He, one of his favorite, ho his hobby was hiking. He was a known hiker and very experienced and very skilled. But something happened. We don't know what happened yet. Maybe we won't ever know, but something happened and uh, something went wrong. He was out there alone. So always be very careful when out hiking, uh, doing things you never know. Even a trail like this, I could fall, break my ankle, and no one could come for me. Something could come along. Bad things could happen. But the main point of this is I wanted to take my hat off for Julian Sands. Here's a little messy. Rest in peace. Uh, condolences to his family, to his friends, to his fans, and I'll never forget him. He was very kind to me. One of the best moments uh, as far as like celebrity meet and greets I've ever had. So rest in peace, Julian. And we're on a hike for you right now. Moment of silence for him. Okay, rest in peace Julian Sands, watch ahead. And I believe I found the trail I'm looking for. I can actually make out part of the bridge through the tree line down that way. 
Okay, so there's the bridge over the Peace River, the river down that way. There's some relics left out here. Giant water pipe right here. Oh, look at this. Big concrete structure, like a lean-to there. And then out beyond the pipe, whoa, okay. This must have been some sort of an old sidewalk, I would think. Maybe a footbridge. There's pieces of it, big concrete pieces, some sort of an old bridge. And that's the bridge we saw crossing the road bridge just a moment ago. Look at this. Okay, I actually climbed up on this pipe. It's pretty large, so I could get a closer look of the bridge. Look at there. I would not walk on that. That thing does not look stable. Look at the trees just kind of growing around it. Wow. And I walked all the way out to the end of this pipe. Just left out here. Look at this. You can see the Peace River. And then, again, a little closer. It looks like there's a little trail here before me. Look at this. We'll walk right under it. That footbridge. There you go. Looks like an oak tree kind of growing up underneath it. We'll walk underneath it. There you go. This way. Oh, wow. Yeah, I didn't expect to see this out here today. Yeah, it looks like an old pedestrian bridge. I mean, it's very short. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if this would have supported a railroad or a, you know, a train. Looks like an old pedestrian bridge, some sort. Maybe an old trail that used to run through here. There's also a foundation for another bridge that used to be out here. Now this could have been an old railroad bridge. Columns for it. Look at this. I hear monkeys. <laughs> There's some other folks out here. Yeah, look, at one time, it looks like there was another bridge here. And there's the Peace River and the bridge we crossed over. And now directly underneath the main bridge, the one we just crossed over. Big cypress tree out here. Oh, look at this, an alien. They're here. Check that out. Oh, shout out to Chris the girl, look. She's a huge Simpsons fan. It's Homer, right? That's Homer, right? Yeah, it's gotta be. <laughs> we were watching Simpsons last night in our new home. We watched like five or six episodes as we were unpacking our stuff. Yeah, we just moved. Look at that, babe, it's Homer. Dope. Just watching my six. Murky water here. Coming around this column, former foundation for the bridge. Look at that, all the way around. Then on the other side, there's another one. Here comes a car. Now, if we were to go probably 20 something miles down the Peace River, we'd come to Bloody Bucket Bridge. And who remembers the Bloody Bucket Bridge? I need to retell that story sometime. Maybe we'll go back there someday. All right, guys, I think this is a good spot to end this episode of Florida Roadside Attractions and Abandoned Places. I really appreciate you joining me once again. And if it was your first time here and you enjoyed the video, please come on back. There's gonna be another one and there's much behind. I have a Florida Roadside Attractions and Abandoned Places playlist on the main page of my YouTube channel. So not only subscribe, you can go over there and check out some of the older episodes. Again, began this series in 2020 back when things were shut down and you couldn't do much but just do what you're seeing here driving down the back roads of florida exploring the small towns the nooks and crannies and most of the things that you haven't seen before anywhere until now in this video so there you go i hope you enjoyed i have some of the most fun creating this content uh getting out there uh meeting people seeing new places learning history it's my favorite, so I really appreciate you all tagging along and coming with me. So thank you, thank you so much. All right, shout out to you all guys. I hope you uh, have a happy July 4th weekend. I will see you soon. Know you're awesome, know you're loved, and no matter who you are, what you're going through, there's always much ahead for you. Yes, talking to you guys.
Bye-bye.